It's very common for people to ask the question, if space is expanding, then what's it expanding into? And that follows the following metaphor. Here's the balloon, and here are some galaxies on the balloon. And those galaxies are spaced out to a certain extent. Uh, but that's visible. So when I blow them up, this metaphorical universe is filling space, and those, again, further apart, although you can't see it. So if you're standing in one of those galaxies, you're going to see all the galaxies and fly further apart from where you are. And that makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. And of course, in this case, this balloon is gradually expanding to fill the space in the room, although it's not going to get to the size of this room before something happens. So something will not happen. However, the actual universe and the actual space is not like that. And I want to explain why. If you have... Okay, suppose I was God. Now, this is a metaphorical creator God, like the kind of God that Einstein posited. It's not a literal God. And this God is also a creator, a first cause. And we all know first cause argument doesn't work. So, this God also has very bad special effects. So, first of all, let's fade to black. This is an infinite empty space. Into this infinite empty space, by clapping, I will introduce a universe. Now this universe is different than the actual universe because it has no, uh, it has, it's in an infinite space and it consists of galaxies, stars, planets and so on, and then it comes to an age and then there's nothing. Okay, now suppose I destroy that universe and instantly create it with everyone's memories intact over here. So I've shifted it to the left. Now that universe, having been shifted to the left, how are you going to tell but it's been shifted to the left. Nothing you can observe will actually indicate that it's shifted to the left. So that's what Leibniz used as an argument for saying that space is a relationship between objects rather than a container for objects. And in the same way he also used, and this turned out later to be incorrect, the idea of time, where time is about things being earlier, later, or simultaneous with events in the universe, uh, with events. And that seems to work, although in fact it doesn't. Then along comes Newton. Now Newton didn't have a bottle of vinegar like this, but he did point out that when things accelerate, they sort of try to stay in the same place. And you can swing them around, and they stay at the bottom if you swing them fast enough, and all that kind of thing. So they seem to be corresponding to some sort of frame of reference, which is absolute. So Newton said, it's a container. The universe is space, is objects in space, and those objects are situated inside this thing, which is space. And space was actually a thing rather than a relationship between the objects. And this was an unusual departure for science because it meant that Newton was positing the existence of an entity which couldn't be observed in any way. It could be observed through inertia and the effects of acceleration and all that kind of thing, but you could never actually look at it and say there was space. Then along comes Einstein, and Einstein points out that if you're in a train carriage moving at the speed of light, or near the speed of light, there's a lot of train carriages in Einstein, and you turn a light on in the middle of the train carriage, the light moves out to either side, and it's moving along, and as far as someone's standing in the carriage is concerned, it bounces back and reflects, and you see it bounce back at the same time. But if you're standing on a platform, that's not what's happening, because light always moves at the same speed, so as it moves along, the wall following it is going to come up and meet the light and the wall trailing is going to take longer than the light to get there because it will always move at the same speed. So from somebody standing on the platform, apart from being extremely unfortunate because there's a train moving past them at the speed of light, they will see, briefly, before they're zonked into oblivion, the light arriving at the opposite ends of the train carriage at different times. So simultaneity is not a symmetrical relationship, it's not a transitive relationship. You can be in love with someone, and that person isn't necessarily in love with you, and that person can be in love with somebody else, but that doesn't follow that you're in love with that person. And that's what time is like as far as the relationship is concerned. Now that also applies to space, because what the claim is that the universe is expanding is nothing to do with balloons. What it actually means is that space is actually an abstraction of the relationship of direction and distance. And it 
is a relationship rather than a particular or rather a, than a container. And that relationship, <coughs> the claim that the universe is expanding, is the claim that the maximum distance between any two points increases constantly. It's not the claim that the universe is blowing up like a balloon. That's a completely different claim. And that is why space is not expanding into anything. It's similar, saying that space is expanding into something is a bit like saying that there is something north of the North Pole or south of the South Pole. However, because of brain theory, there is an idea that actually that is what is happening. But that doesn't alter the fact that space is not a particular, it is a relationship between things. And that's what the misunderstanding is about. So if you like this video, please rate, share, comment and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why so I can improve and I'll see you tomorrow.